Disclosure, I was invited by the Panzer Museum Munster. Anyway, I was wrong about the BMPs. I repeatedly stated that it is amphibious. I mean, theoretically it is, but more like in a way that a public servant serves the public. So to a very limited degree and when all stars align properly. To get a better idea of how amphibious or not the BMP is, we will take a look at several sources. First, a manual. Second, we will look at the statement from a German combat engineer that currently serves in Ukraine. And that has some practical experience. First, we look at the manual. The reason for this is simple. It gives a basic idea how the BMP should work under ideal conditions. Whereas later, we look at more realistic circumstances. Additionally, the manual contains information on how to prepare the vehicle properly. So the manual is from 1984 and it is for the BMP-1. Note that the BMP-2 is a bit different and there were actually some changes made to keep it amphibious since it was heavier than the BMP-1. Because of the hull design of the BMP-2 was not altered despite the weight gain, it became necessary to revise the fenders and side skirts to add form-filled flotation aids to boost the vehicle's buoyancy. Yet besides that, the capabilities and limitations should be rather similar. The basic description of the BMP-1 in the manual is as follows. The infantry fighting vehicle is a reliable, buoyant, armored combat vehicle of the motorized rifleman. It combines high firepower and great maneuverability and offers protection against the effects of conventional nuclear weapons in accordance with its armor and through the complex protection system. Yet what I find rather more interesting is this statement later in the manual. Equipment for water travel ensures that the Bouillon infantry fighting vehicle can negotiate water obstacles without loss of combat effectiveness and enter combat on the far shore without loss of time. At first I was confused about how the BMP would have the same combat effectiveness while slowly swimming across a river or a lake in comparison to a BMP driving fast across an open field. Yet it seems to, without loss of combat effectiveness, means basically that all weapons can be fired while it is swimming on the water. Let us look at the theoretical capabilities. The maximum speed crossing still waters is 7 km per hour or 4.35 miles per hour. The two bilge pumps can pump out 300 liters per minute. The maximum running speed of the water that can be crossed is given with 1.2 meters per second, which is about 4.32 kilometers per hour or 2.68 miles per hour. To put this in perspective, according to one source, the river Danube has a running speed of around 3 to 10 kilometers per hour or 1.8 to 6.2 miles per hour during medium water level. Meanwhile, the river Elbe has only 3 km per hour, whereas the Mississippi River has about 1.2 miles per hour, which is 1.93 km per hour. Yet far more interesting is that the maximum wave height is given with 0.25 meters or about 10 inches. In comparison, the MTLB's maximum wave height is twice as much according to Tankolat. The permissible wave height when swimming is 0.5 meters. But when fording a water obstacle, it is only 0.50 meters, probably due to concerns of water ingress when the vehicle is not prepared for swimming. Splash protection when swimming is provided by the shield air intake tube and the boxy splash guard over the radiator and exhaust outlets. For me, these rather low values for the BMP clearly underline that the capability of the BMP was to cross slow rivers and lakes under good weather conditions. So it was amphibious in the sense of river crossing, but not landing on a beach like Normandy. According to Drache Niffel, the wave height at the beaches was an average of 3 to 4 feet, so 0.9 to 1.2 meters, or 36 to 48 inches, and in some areas even slightly more. Now be aware that a lot of equipment and technology was used to allow for the BMP to be amphibious, as you can see from this picture from the manual. So there are about 20 components marked. Some of them are mainly modifications like number 19 for the driver's mirror that was changed. Others were minor like number 20, which is just a switch for the front and rear pump. Of course, those pumps number three and 17 are a bit more complex. Particularly important here is number one, the wave brake at the front of the vehicle. It is crucial for preventing the BMP doing a nose dive. Furthermore, Tankolat points out the short, stubby bow 
of the original BMP from 1966 gave the drivers a good view of what was in front of the vehicle when driving, but the bow was too short to properly enter rivers from a steep bank, as the bow would tip too deeply into the water. So the bow was lengthened. This created a large blind spot in front of the BMP, but made it possible to enter bodies of water from any angle. Suffice to say, they took this requirement quite seriously. Before we move to the reality check part of the video, a short look at the preparation according to the manual. It involves a lot of activity, about 20 steps, depending on how you count and in two phases. This includes obvious steps like checking the hatches and doors, but also mounting towing ropes, the change of the rear view mirror and changing the elevation of the gun. More complicated aspects are checking the engine valves or distributing the weight in case the rifle squad is not fully manned. Now these preparations are not trivial, they take time, training, etc. And thus it is time for the reality check part of the video. So I ask a German combat engineer currently fighting in Ukraine, if you want to follow him, I'll link his profile in the description. His initial statement about the amphibious capability of the BMP was as follows. In short, as a rule, it does not work, in my opinion due to various factors. Material condition, training level, body of water condition, lack of reconnaissance and preparation of the transition point. First off, about the condition of the vehicle. For that it is crucial that all seals work properly. This of course requires proper maintenance. Yet even if that is the case, we should not forget that most equipment used in the Ukraine right now is rather dated, as such many parts are likely worn out. Second, he notes that a lot of parts also need to be properly greased in order to prevent damage later on, for instance the suspension, wheel bearings and other parts. This of course brings us to the next part, proper training. Since the preparation is quite time intensive and requires functional equipment, it is unlikely that this is trained regularly or even at all. Now let us just assume the equipment is in good condition and the crews are well trained. Then everything should be fine. Well, nope. There are several caveats I wouldn't have thought at all. First off, the BMP is designed to swim, yet to properly swim in a body of water, a few criteria need to be fulfilled, to quote. So ideally you drive into a body of water that is deep enough so that the vehicle floats right up. What is often the case here, however, are waters that have seen relatively little human influence or use. Thus you first get a silty sediment of 10 to 60 cm, about 4 to 23 inch, of various decomposed organic material and light soil. Now when a BMP goes in there, the following often happens. The narrow tracks sink into the silt, which sucks itself additionally to the flat hull. The vehicle moves forward in the silt more than it floats up and is washed over after a few meters due to the low board height, the mentioned wave height. Water enters through the hatches, the end. If the body of water is not deep enough, it can happen that the BMP gets stuck. Of course, this can be prevented if a proper combat engineer does reconnaissance, yet he notes that this is often ignored by the high ups. Although it is possible to prepare a proper entry point into the water with an excavator or similar equipment, but that is not always available. Finally, it could also be that some of the capabilities are not completely unlocked by the crew yet. According to the manual, a certain class consciousness is also required to use it properly, to quote, only those who have a firm class standpoint have mastered the technology and are willing and able to constantly maintain their operational readiness even under the most complicated conditions will be able to fully exploit the advantages of our infantry fighting vehicles on the battlefield. Apparently, the National People's Army knew that only with a certain ideological affiliation you can unlock all the perks of the BMP capability tree. I probably should ask Chief then what level of freedom is necessary to unlock the blowout panels on the M1 Abrams. Well, real socialism might not always feed you, but it certainly provides enough hogwash. Anyway, to conclude, technically the BMP is capable of crossing rivers and lakes during good weather conditions. Practically, this is less the case, since it requires that the equipment is properly maintained, the BMP is properly prepared, the crew properly trained, and even if that is the case, the body of water needs to fulfill certain criteria like depth, condition of the sentiment, and proper entry and exit points as well. This might have been less an issue with the Soviet arming during the height of the Cold War that had a lot of auxiliary equipment, vehicles and reserves, but for both the Ukrainian and Russian armed forces in Ukraine it is doubtful 
that they have such capabilities and even if they have them, if it is worth to use them in a river crossing. Thank you to the Panzermuseum Munster for inviting me, thank you for watching and see you next time.